Comics. That is the most underrated, overlooked uh, piece, I think, in the whole Marvel Universe. JJ, were you into like superhero comics at all? Is that like how that big yeah, passion for you? I, I was, uh, not as much as uh, as Josh, but you know, I worked in a comic book store when I was a kid. One of the first jobs I had, and I was like, you know, just 15 years old, and I got a job at, in this store in LA. And the guy, the first day on the job, the guy who was a really weird dude who owned the store, uh, he, I I don't know what he was on, but he gave me the keys, and he's like, I'll, I'll be back because I'll see you tomorrow. And he left. And I was like alone in the store with the keys. I think he didn't even tell me how to lock the, the door. So uh, I kind of wanted to steal some of the older Spidey books that were there, and I, I didn't do it. I probably you know, should have done it. But uh, so I, I, I would read books, you know, there, and I got into it. But I was never into it. I was more like into the Twilight Zone and more uh, TV, and, TV and movie stuff. At one point, you did write a script for a Superman movie. Um, it didn't get um, made. But... It was very well received. <laughs> Is that a genre that you would be interested in returning to, like uh, superheroes, or is that I'm sure? Yeah, of course, I sure. I'd be open to any for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Joss, is it too early to talk about kind of like what your take is on on, on the Avengers? Uh, even if you could just sum it up in a line. Or... I have to have a take. Yeah. Goodness. It's, it's, it's helpful when you're a director to have kind of like a take on it. Okay. Um, it is a little early. Um, you know, we're, it's it's. I am still writing an outline. Still very, you know, I'm still in that stage of reworking it, reworking it, reworking it. Um, I will say that the thing that I love about it, the thing that made me excited to do it, was just how completely counterintuitive it is. It makes no sense. These people should not even be in the same room, let alone on the same team. And that, to me, is the very definition of family. <laughs> JJ, you grew up uh, making uh, films on that Super 8 camera. You also grew up loving the films of Steven Spielberg. And now you are making a movie called Super 8 with Steven Spielberg. And is that like a total coincidence? Is it a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's sort of a, a dream come true, honestly. Um, the, the strange thing, this is the, um, a weird story. Uh, when I was 16 years old, Matt Reeves uh, and I, Matt directed Cloverfield, and we, we created uh, Felicity together. Matt and I were at a Super 8 film festival in, in L.A. And uh, the L.A. Times wrote a story about it that came out the, the next day. And we got a phone call that day from Steven Spielberg's assistant, who at the time was Kathy Kennedy. And she said, uh, Steven made films when he was your age, and they're damaged. The splices are sort of coming off, little tape splices. Would you guys be interested in repairing them? And Matt and I were like, yeah, we got finals, but we could probably also repair Steven Spielberg's movies <laughs> that he made. <laughs> and they said, oh, great, we'll, we'll drop them off. So someone comes and drops off uh, these two original films, Firelight and Escape to Nowhere, that Steven Spielberg made when he was a kid. And these are the original, there are no copies, these are the original movies. And, we, and it says on the film, which of course we watched them, it says, written and directed by Steve Spielberg. And I'm like, Matt, we must take a frame of this. We have to. And he's like, no, no, we can't do that. They'll know. So we didn't steal it. And uh, anyway, a lot of almost theft in my childhood. Uh, so we repaired these movies. They were shot on regular rate, not super rate. And we like peeled off every splice and put it back on. And it was just watching these movies that he made. It was insane. And it was just so inspiring. And uh, I had no idea why this was happening. It felt like a complete joke. Because isn't there a building somewhere at Universal that's designed to house the team that restores Steven Spielberg's films that he made when he was a kid? So we, were, we, were, we repair these movies, and they pick them up, they give us $300, and that's when I knew why they had us do it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so years later, uh, this is a couple years ago, I called uh, Steven, and I said, I have an idea for a movie called Super 8. And I just sort of pitched him. And, he was very excited about it because I knew, having, in a weird way, worked on those movies, you know, uh, I had a sense of what he had done when he was a kid. What can you say about Super 8? Is, it all, is this also a case a little too soon, or can you say? I, it's, I think it's, it's way too early. I mean, I, I, I would love to, you know, show you footage, but we haven't shot any. Um, uh, yeah, of course, you know, my favorite thing about the movie, though, is that someone, uh, you know, will go to the theater and see 
the trailer and hopefully say, oh my god, that looks bitchin', and have no idea they're starring in it. Yeah. So we're, we're shooting in September, we haven't shot the movie yet. Now what has been the collaboration like been with Steven so far? I mean, has that It's unbelievable, it really is uh, surreal, and because there is a genre element to the movie, uh, it's impossible to work with him and not constantly reference the work he's done, and you don't want to sound like you're being a sycophant, but um, it, 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 it's been incredible. He's, he's been beyond helpful, and uh, the, the movie is, I think, very much in the spirit of, uh, of some of the, the Amber films that, uh, that, that he made years ago. So it, it's, it's a, it is a dream come true, and I, I couldn't imagine working on something that was more uh, sort of personal and also kind of uh, hyper-real. You know, it's not like uh, the movie is some kind of autobiography, but there's a lot of stuff in it that feels very personal. Will a film called Super 8 be in 3D? No. No? <laughs> Very interesting. Interesting, yeah. You're welcome. Let's talk about 3D filmmaking, because that's been a big storyline in movies this year. Um, are, are you guys fans of the current 3D? I mean, do you like 3D as a movie-going experience? And as movie makers, but as moviegoers? Honestly, I'm totally into it. I love it. I really think it's the technology is really good. It kind of puts you in the space. It doesn't give me a big headache. And I think that it's being done so much now that we're past the eat the pancake, you know, sort of poke things at the screen era of 3D. And you can just sort of, it just adds a little something. There are definitely movies where, you know, they're, that shouldn't be in 3D. I don't know, like Cabin in the Woods. Or, Watching once upon a time in the West, I was like, well, this might be okay. In 3D. It's all about space. You know? The thing that drives me crazy about 3D, though, is, is I, when, it, when you put the glasses on, everything just gets dim. Like it all feels a little sort of gray and muted, and I feel like I want to see the vibrant. I want to see the movie, and I feel like well, you get into it. But it, for me, it always has that. You know, my brain adjusts to it after a while, but it always has that. that those first few minutes, you're always like, oh wow, this is. This seems like less than you know, the, the experience, like an IMAX experience to me, which is my favorite kind of experience, and it's so, you know, immersive, but the, the 3D thing for me, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not totally on board yet, but I'm sure it's, it's too late for me, so. I mean, as storytellers, I mean, are there any opportunities that are, are you writing to 3D in, in, in any way in your, in your current project? Writing, you, writing to 3D with 3D in mind. Me? Yeah. Um, no, I'm not, I, you know, I, there's definitely no, and then the sharp thing comes right at him. Um, I, it's, uh, that, uh, the thing is, if you're making an action movie, um, 3D it lends itself to that anyway. Things are going to come at the screen. Things are going to, you know, you're going to, you're going to want to get that sense of space. You're going to want to get that sense of where they are and how they're coming at each other. It's, it's, it's going to be that kind of experience anyway. It's going to work in 2D. The movie has to work in 2D. Most people will see it that way. So you just sort of you'll take it into account ultimately when you're framing, but I don't think it, would, it doesn't really change the way I shoot. There are a few things you want, you know, a sort of a sense of you know depth of field where you get you know with the, that you get with the shorter lenses or wider lenses. I like those anyway. You don't cut as much because you know it's, it, it messes up the eye a little bit. I like that anyway. You know, we want things to be coming to people, so it's exciting. I also like that. So it, it doesn't it hasn't changed anything except it's going to make it harder to shoot. <laughs> Years ago, I was in New York and I was uh, kind of a little sick and it was late at night and I turned the TV on and I wasn't feeling very well and I was switching the channels and this movie came on. It was about a bunch of young adults and they were acting really weird and they were like, you know, they were really scared about something but like it kept doing these weird jump cuts and I had no idea what they were scared of and then they would like offer someone something they'd be like, here, do you want some food? I and mean, they push right out, and the person's like, sure, thanks. And they take it, I was like, what the hell? And then, and there was like, they were talking about like these romantic scenes that didn't exist. And I realized it was Friday the 13th, 3D, with no 3D, no violence, no sex. It was, everything was cut out. Uh, and it was actually better. <laughs> Joss, can you talk a little bit about, you mentioned Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, and, uh, and could you talk a little bit about why the 3D kind of conversion came about, and when are we going to see this book? Um, you know, I'll answer the second question first. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we, you know, the fate of...